Hello and welcome back to our channel, where we break down the complexities of finance and retirement planning so you can make informed decisions about your future. If you're new here, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you won't miss our upcoming videos. Today, we're delving into a variety of financial topics that can help guide your retirement strategy. We'll be covering the importance of asset allocation, the role of social security, the concept of catch-up contributions, annuity basics, and a popular guideline known as the 4% rule. Remember, these concepts can play a crucial role in shaping your retirement and it's essential to understand them to effectively navigate your financial journey. So, grab your notebook, sit back, and let's dive in. First fact. Asset allocation plays an indispensable role in financial and investment planning, serving as a cornerstone for maximizing return potential while mitigating risks associated with various investment channels. It refers to the practice of dividing one's investment portfolio across different types of assets, including equities, bonds, cash equivalents, and potentially alternative investments like real estate and commodities. This process is not a random act, but a strategic decision based on several factors, like risk tolerance, investment horizon, and financial goals. Risk tolerance is a pivotal factor in asset allocation, and it primarily signifies the extent of fluctuation an investor is willing to withstand in their investment portfolio. Investors with a high risk tolerance might allocate a significant portion of their portfolio to equities, which traditionally have a higher return potential, but are also subject to higher volatility. Conversely, those with low risk tolerance may prefer bonds or cash equivalents, known for their relative stability, albeit lower return potential. Next, the investment horizon, or the length of time an investor plans to keep their money invested, significantly influences asset allocation. Generally, a longer investment horizon allows for a higher risk tolerance because there is more time to recover from potential short-term losses. For example, young investors saving for retirement may opt for a more aggressive asset allocation, focusing heavily on equities, whereas those nearing retirement may want a more conservative mix that prioritizes income and capital preservation. Furthermore, financial goals are instrumental in shaping an individual's asset allocation strategy. Those saving for a down payment on a home in the next few years might adopt a conservative approach, while those saving for retirement 30 years away might take on a more aggressive strategy. The uniqueness of individual goals underscores the importance of a personalized approach to asset allocation. Asset allocation also contributes to portfolio diversification, another essential aspect of effective investing. By investing across various asset classes, investors can mitigate the risk of significant losses if one asset class performs poorly. This is based on the principle that not all asset classes move in tandem, when equities might be down, bonds or other assets might perform well, and vice versa. This volatility can be balanced through a diversified asset allocation. Periodic rebalancing is another critical component related to asset allocation. Over time, the initial allocation of assets can drift due to differing returns among asset classes, possibly leading to an investment mix that doesn't align with the investor's original risk tolerance and objectives. Regular rebalancing, selling overperforming assets and buying underperforming ones, ensures the portfolio stays aligned with the investor's goals. It's important to note that there isn't a one-size-fits-all asset allocation strategy. An allocation that works for one investor may not work for another due to differences in risk tolerance, financial goals, and investment horizons. Moreover, these factors can change over time, necessitating a review and adjustment of the allocation. In conclusion, asset allocation is a pivotal element of investment strategy that should be tailored to the investor's financial landscape. It is a methodical process of dividing investments among different asset classes to achieve a balance between risk and return that matches the investor's risk tolerance, financial objectives, and investment horizon. Hence, understanding the importance of asset allocation can provide an investor with a clear roadmap for wealth accumulation and preservation. Second fact. Social security is a fundamental aspect of the United States social safety net, playing a vital role in providing economic security for millions of Americans. Established during the Great Depression in the 1930s under President Franklin D. Roosevelt, it was intended to ensure that older citizens, who might not be able to work or save enough, would still have a reliable income stream in their retirement years. Social security is primarily a pay-as-you-go system, where current workers and employers pay social security taxes, which are then used to provide benefits to current retirees, the disabled, and other eligible beneficiaries. This intergenerational contract implies a social responsibility towards those who have worked in the past or are unable to work, emphasizing the underlying principle of shared welfare and social solidarity. One of the primary roles of social security is to provide a source of retirement income. After contributing to the system throughout their working lives, individuals can start receiving monthly benefits upon reaching the eligible retirement age, currently set between 66 and 67 for full benefits, depending on the birth year. These benefits are designed to replace a portion of the individual's pre-retirement earnings, thereby providing a base of financial support. In addition to retirement benefits, Social Security also plays a vital role in providing disability insurance. This component of the program offers financial assistance to individuals who have a severe physical or mental condition that prevents them from working. 
The system recognizes that disabilities can lead to significant financial hardships due to lost earnings and increased medical costs, and hence, provides a critical safety net. Moreover, Social Security provides survivor benefits, offering financial assistance to the families of deceased workers. This includes benefits for widows, widowers, and dependent children. In this way, Social Security serves to protect families from potential economic distress that can occur due to the sudden loss of a family breadwinner. One less known, yet significant role of Social Security, is its function in reducing poverty rates, particularly among older adults. Many retired individuals rely on Social Security as their primary, if not sole, source of income. Without these benefits, the poverty rate among seniors would likely be significantly higher. While the above roles paint a broad picture, the impact of Social Security is inherently personal and varies widely. For some, it is an essential lifeline, while for others, it serves as a supplement to other retirement savings. Its universal design ensures that all workers have some level of protection against income loss due to retirement, disability, or death. However, despite its critical role, Social Security faces significant funding challenges due to demographic changes, like the aging population and decreasing birth rates, threatening its future sustainability. Therefore, policymakers continue to debate potential reforms, including raising the retirement age, increasing taxes, or modifying benefit formulas. In conclusion, Social Security plays a multifaceted role in American society. It not only provides a financial safety net for retirees but also supports those with disabilities and families dealing with the loss of a wage earner. As a cornerstone of the nation's social welfare system, it plays an integral role in mitigating poverty and promoting economic stability among the most vulnerable populations. Its future sustainability remains a significant concern, underscoring the importance of continued dialogue and reform. Third fact. The concept of catch-up contributions is a significant aspect of retirement planning, particularly for individuals who are nearing retirement age. Established by the Economic Growth and Tax Relief Reconciliation Act of 2001, this provision allows individuals aged 50 or older to contribute additional amounts to their retirement savings plans above the standard annual limit. These catch-up contributions provide a valuable opportunity for individuals to bolster their retirement savings and to make up for any years when they were unable to contribute fully. Retirement savings plans that permit catch-up contributions include 401k plans, 403b plans, governmental 457b plans, and individual retirement accounts, IRAs. For example, as of my knowledge cutoff in September 2021, the standard contribution limit for 401k plans was $19,500 per year. However, individuals aged 50 or older could contribute an additional $6,500 per year as a catch-up contribution. Similarly, for IRAs, the standard contribution limit was $6,000 per year, with an additional catch-up contribution of $1,000 allowed for those 50 and over. Catch-up contributions play a crucial role in helping individuals prepare for retirement, particularly as people are living longer and the costs of healthcare are rising. They provide a chance to boost retirement savings later in one's career when earnings are often at their peak. For many individuals, earlier years might have been focused on other financial priorities, such as buying a home, raising a family, or paying off student loans. As these obligations lessen, the opportunity to increase retirement savings becomes more feasible. Moreover, catch-up contributions can yield significant tax benefits. Like standard contributions, catch-up contributions to traditional 401k plans and traditional IRAs are made with pre-tax dollars, reducing the individual's taxable income for the year. The funds then grow tax-deferred until withdrawal in retirement. For Roth 401ks and Roth IRAs, the contributions are made with after-tax dollars but grow tax-free, and withdrawals in retirement are also tax-free. However, it's essential to understand that not everyone can maximize the benefits of catch-up contributions due to financial constraints. The additional amounts might be unfeasible for some individuals, underscoring the importance of consistent, regular contributions to retirement savings throughout one's career. Additionally, despite the benefits, not all older adults are aware of the opportunity for catch-up contributions. Thus, there is a need for increased education and awareness about this crucial aspect of retirement planning. Financial advisors and employers play a significant role in providing information and guidance about these contributions. In conclusion, catch-up contributions are a powerful tool for individuals nearing retirement age, allowing them to contribute more to their retirement savings than younger workers. They can help ensure that individuals have enough savings to support themselves in retirement, providing peace of mind and financial stability. These contributions offer both immediate tax advantages and long-term benefits, thanks to the potential for compounded growth over time. However, taking full advantage of catch-up contributions requires both awareness of this option and the financial ability to contribute the additional amounts. As such, they represent one piece of the larger puzzle of effective retirement planning. Fourth fact. Annuities are financial products designed to offer a steady income stream, primarily used to provide income during retirement. They are contracts made with an insurance company, which promises to pay the annuitant a series of income payments in return for a lump sum payment or a series of payments made by the annuitant. 
Understanding the basic concepts of annuities can help individuals make informed decisions about their retirement planning strategies. There are two main phases in the life of an annuity, the accumulation phase and the annuitization phase. The accumulation phase is when the annuitant makes either a single lump sum payment or a series of payments to the insurance company, building up the capital in the annuity. The annuitization phase is when the insurance company begins to make income payments back to the annuitant. The timing, frequency, and amount of these payments are defined in the annuity contract. Annuities can be classified as either immediate or deferred. An immediate annuity begins paying out income almost immediately after the annuitant makes a lump sum payment. This can be beneficial for individuals who are already in retirement and want to secure a steady income stream. Deferred annuities, on the other hand, allow the annuitant's investment to grow for a certain period before the income payments begin. This can be advantageous for those who want to accumulate more wealth before retirement. Additionally, annuities can be either fixed or variable. Fixed annuities provide a guaranteed interest rate, and subsequently, a guaranteed payout. This can provide a level of security for individuals who prefer predictable returns and a steady income stream. Variable annuities, in contrast, have their returns linked to the performance of a portfolio of investments, usually mutual funds. While they can potentially offer higher returns, they also come with a higher risk as the payouts can vary depending on the performance of the underlying investments. One significant advantage of annuities is tax-deferred growth. The money in an annuity grows tax-free until it is withdrawn or distributed. This can lead to higher returns over time due to the power of compounding. However, it's important to note that when distributions are made, they are taxed as ordinary income. Despite these benefits, annuities are not without drawbacks. They can have high fees, including surrender charges if you withdraw money before a certain period. Also, they may be less liquid than other investment products, making them less suitable for individuals who might need access to their funds on short notice. Annuities can also be complex and hard to understand, with a variety of options and features that can be tailored to the individual's needs. Therefore, it's crucial to thoroughly read and understand the annuity contract and consider seeking advice from a trusted financial advisor before purchasing an annuity. In conclusion, annuities serve as a tool to provide a steady income stream, especially during retirement. They offer options for immediate or deferred payouts and fixed or variable returns and provide the advantage of tax-deferred growth. However, the complexities and potential costs associated with annuities highlight the importance of understanding these financial products before integrating them into a retirement income strategy. Annuities can be an effective piece of a broader financial plan when used correctly and with a comprehensive understanding of their mechanics and implications. Last but not least, the 4% rule is a widely recognized guideline used in retirement planning, originally proposed by financial advisor William Bengen in 1994. It suggests that retirees can withdraw 4% of their portfolio in the first year of retirement, and then adjust that amount each subsequent year for inflation while maintaining a reasonable likelihood that their savings will last for 30 years. The premise of the 4% rule is based on historical data on stock and bond returns and inflation rates. Bengen's research focused on the worst-case scenarios in market history, considering volatile periods like the Great Depression and the stagflation era of the 1970s. His findings suggested that a 4% withdrawal rate would have sustained a retiree's income over 30 years in even the worst market conditions in the historical dataset he examined. The 4% rule provides a simplistic, straightforward approach to a complex problem, how to balance the need for income in retirement against the risk of depleting savings too quickly. This guideline is particularly helpful for new retirees who might be unsure about how much they can safely withdraw from their savings each year. It can offer a sense of financial security and predictability, helping to mitigate fears of outliving their savings. However, it's important to understand that the 4% rule is a guideline, not a guaranteed strategy. It is based on historical data and may not accurately predict future market conditions. While it accounts for inflation adjustments, it does not consider other factors that may affect a retiree's financial situation. These factors include unexpected major expenses, such as healthcare costs, changes in lifestyle, or fluctuations in the cost of living. Moreover, the 4% rule assumes a portfolio allocation of about 50% to 75% in stocks, with the balance in bonds. Retirees with a more conservative portfolio might need to adjust their withdrawal rate downwards, while those willing to take on more risk might be able to safely withdraw more than 4%. The rule is also built on a 30-year retirement period. If retirement lasts longer, perhaps due to early retirement or longer life expectancy, there's an increased risk of depleting savings. Conversely, if the retirement period is significantly shorter than 30 years, a higher withdrawal rate might be viable. The 4% rule doesn't account for other sources of income either, such as social security, pensions, or part-time work in retirement. These sources can significantly reduce the amount needed to be withdrawn from personal savings, thus potentially extending the lifespan of those savings. In conclusion, the 4% rule offers a starting point for determining sustainable retirement withdrawals. It is a benchmark born from historical market performance intended to provide a high degree of confidence that one's savings will not be depleted prematurely.
However, it's a guideline rather than a one-size-fits-all solution. Each retiree's circumstances are unique, encompassing a broad range of factors like health status, lifestyle choices, other income sources, and personal risk tolerance. Therefore, it's crucial to consider the 4% rule within the broader context of a comprehensive retirement planning strategy, which should ideally be personalized to meet individual needs, goals, and circumstances. And that wraps up our in-depth look at these crucial financial concepts. We hope you now have a better understanding of the importance of asset allocation, how social security functions, the benefit of catch-up contributions, what annuities entail, and how the 4% rule could be applied in your retirement planning. As always, remember that everyone's financial situation is unique. Therefore, while these principles provide a strong foundation, they should be tailored to fit your personal financial goals and circumstances. Consider seeking professional advice if you're unsure about how to incorporate these concepts into your strategy. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who might also benefit. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with our latest content. If you have any questions, or if there are any other financial topics you'd like us to cover, leave us a comment below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep planning for a future that makes financial sense for you.